And my name is Marianne. I'm the Education Director over at the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy, a nonprofit based on Cape Cod. Um, and we work in white shark conservation. So through research, public safety, and education, we are trying to ensure that we have white sharks in our marine ecosystem for years to come. That word, conservation, do you boys and girls know what that means? Ah, here's some great answers. I'm seeing some great comments. So conservation or conserve is working to ensure that you have something not just for today, not just for tomorrow, not just for next week, next month. We are looking to ensure that we have something for years ahead of us, okay? And that's what we're trying to do with these white sharks because they are an important part of our marine ecosystem. So, you know, part of conservation is, you know, that education piece is building people's knowledge. And so today we are going to build your knowledge all about shark anatomy. We've had a lot of questions coming in over the last week and a half during these enrichment programs from people who are wondering about the fins on the shark, the colors on a shark. And so today this program is going to explain all of that to you. So if you took a moment and went to our website, we do have some resources available. Um, we have a shark anatomy diagram worksheet. We also have a page that once you're done with our lesson today, you can go back and review the information you learned and try to answer those questions. Um, if you don't have a printer at home and you weren't able to print out that worksheet, no worries. If you have a piece of scrap paper nearby and you want to draw your own picture of a shark and follow along with us today so you can make that diagram on your own, a diagram being a picture or model that represents something uh, where you actually are going to label the parts of it to try to explain, um, you know, that's what we're going to build today is we are going to build that diagram. Now, today we are going to look and talk about the external anatomy of a shark. So this is looking at the outside of the shark's body. If we were going to talk about the internal anatomy, that means we'd be looking inside the shark's body. And scientists, if you're going to be a shark scientist, you do need to understand both the inside and the outside of the animal to really understand a bit more about it. Um, but today, for this lesson, we're just going to focus on the outside of the shark's body. So, uh, looking at that diagram worksheet, or if you drew your own picture of a shark at home, um, as we go through this today, how this is going to work as we talk about the different parts of the shark, okay? If you have the ability to go ahead and we have our word box up here, and if you're doing well in school with your writing and you want to use this opportunity to practice, when we go to talk about, let's say, the dorsal fin on the shark, that's this fin here, you can go ahead and you're going to write dorsal fin right here in that box, okay? Now, as we go through this today, if maybe your writing ability isn't quite there yet, but you want to follow along, another way you can label a diagram is by color coding it. So instead of taking the moment to write it, if you want to get a box of crayons, colored pencils, or some markers, you can use a color coding version for this, in which case you're going to choose whichever color you want dorsal fin to represent, and you're going to lightly shade over the word dorsal fin up here on the word box, so then you know that dorsal fin is marked on your diagram in blue. And then you're going to take that same blue and you're going to color in that box like so. So notice that up here, okay, where it's dorsal fin, that you have blue, and then down here, right, that box, so then you know that blue represents the dorsal fin, okay? So you can either write it or you can color code it as you follow along today. If you're not going to make your own diagram sheet, you're just here to learn today and follow along with us, that's great too. We're just excited that you are here to learn about sharks with all of us. So what do you boys and girls at home say we go ahead and get started? So here we go, all right? We're gonna start up here on the nose of the shark today in talking about this anatomy, okay? And looking at the shark, when we look on the nose, you're gonna see that there are two holes, okay, right there on the shark's nose. And those, no those holes there, when we look at our nose, we have two holes, right? What do we call those two holes on our body? Nostrils, that's right, very good. 
Now, on the shark's body, we don't call them nostrils. Instead, we are going to call them nares. So if you want to go ahead and find nares on your word box, and we're going to come down here and we're going to label this box right here with the word nares. So nares is what allows the shark to actually smell. And sharks have a really great sense of smell, okay? Their nickname is actually the swimming noses as they go through the sea. And that sense of smell really enables them to find their prey. Prey being their food source, okay? So on our body, what do our nostrils allow us to do? That's right, they help us smell, just like the shark, and they also enable us to breathe, okay? Now, do we think the nares on the shark help it to breathe? No, okay? What do sharks have that help them to breathe? They have gills, very good, okay? So when we look here, all right, the reason that this is called the nares is because it's there for smelling compared to nostrils, which allow for smelling and breathing, okay? So then let's go back and let's look at the next part of our shark. And so that would be right here. This is looking at the eyes of the shark, okay? Now with our picture, we only see one eye. The other eye would be on the other side of the shark, okay? And all of you boys and girls at home, what do you think? Do sharks have good eyesight or do they have poor eyesight? I can see a lot of you scratching your head and really thinking about it. Sharks, from what we know, actually have really great eyesight, okay? We're still digging in deeper and learning about the different parts of their eye, but one thing we do know is that inside their eye, they have a special lens that is a sphere in shape. So picture a tennis ball, okay? A tennis ball is sphere in shape. And because it's spherical like that, it can actually better bend and reflect light. So we often have a hard time seeing at dawn or dusk when it's really dim lighting, okay? But that is a time when sharks can actually see really well because, all right, that spherical lens can better bend and reflect light, okay? So that is looking at the eyes of the shark. And on different types of sharks, the eyes are located in different parts of the head. Sometimes the eyes are up more over or even kind of in front of the mouth. Other times they're all the way behind the mouth on the shark. And then we also have some sharks like our friend the hammerhead, okay? So I actually have a model of a hammerhead here if we look at this. And when we look at that hammerhead, you can see the eyes, okay, all the way out, all right, on either side of that hammer structure that's on the shark's head there, okay? So notice that, you know, not all sharks have their eyes positioned in the same place. That's something that can differ from one species to another, okay? So moving further down our shark, then we can get into the gill slits, okay? So that's these lines right here on the side of the shark's body. Now people often think that those lines are the gills themselves, okay? Well, those aren't the gills. The gills are actually located inside the shark's body, and the gills, you know, more look like feathers. So there are these long pieces, and they have many rows of them. They're actually called gill rakes, okay? And the reason they're called a gill rake is because if you think about a rake that you use in your yard, that's kind of what it looks like. It's these pieces that fan out, and the purpose of the gills on the body is to do what for the shark? That's right. We already talked about this. It's to enable the shark to breathe, okay? So the gills are going to actually extract the oxygen out of the water. So if we can all make a shark head with our hands right here, okay, with that mouth open, the shark's going to swim through the water with its mouth open, and that water is going to pass into the shark's mouth, and it's going to pass over the gills that are located inside the shark's mouth on either side of its body. And then the gills are going to extract that oxygen out of the water, okay, and then this is where we have what's called gas exchange occurring. Okay, so the shark is going to take oxygen into the gills and it goes into the bloodstream to be circulated around the shark's body. And then the shark is going to put CO2 into the water and then that water is going to rush out the gill slits on the side here. Okay, now oftentimes when you see a picture uh, of a shark, you might see the shark have maybe three gill slits or four gill slits. But by definition, a shark is going to have at least 
five gill slits, and from what we know, they can have up to seven gill slits. And these gill slits are on either side of their body, okay? So that magic number is they have at least five, but they could have even more, okay? Does anyone know what we call a shark that has seven gill slits? The seven gill shark, very good, okay? So the next thing that we are going to look at as we move down the shark is we're gonna start talking about one of our first fins, okay? So that fin here is going to be the dorsal fin. And this is that nice tall fin that's right centered on the back of the shark, okay? When we look here at that dorsal fin, we have the leading edge of the dorsal fin that you can see, all right, as we look on here, and that's, so that's the front edge, and then we have the trailing edge of the dorsal fin, which is on the back side of it here, okay? When we look at that trailing edge, you can see in our picture here that sometimes it can be a bit rough, okay? This is where different things can affect the shark and maybe cause a little bit injury, so we can see different notches or things on that trailing edge of that dorsal fin. Now, the shark has a dorsal fin because that's going to help the shark to be able to balance in the water. As the shark is swimming, it's going to help to provide that stability up for the shark so it doesn't start rolling upside down or anything like that, okay? So this is a pretty important fin on the shark's body. And if we go further back down the shark here, okay, you'll see that we even have a second dorsal fin back here. And this is something that some species have, but not all species of shark have a second dorsal. Now we didn't put in a box to label that today, but if you wanna go ahead and label it on your own, I encourage you to do so. But that's where you're gonna see that small fin back here. This is what you are gonna call that second dorsal fin, okay? Now, if we start to look all over our shark's body, we know that to protect the shark all over it, okay, is the scales of the shark. So looking at the scales of the shark, we're gonna go ahead and label in that box there, okay? So sharks do have scales covering its body and they're a special type of scale. We call them dermal denticles. Can everyone say that for me? Good job, okay? And sharks, you know, they're pretty fast swimmers. Engineers have looked at the, the shape of the shark's body, okay, and how it moves through the water and they have tried to recreate some of the features of the shark, like the scales and the shape into modern day products like airplanes, like swimsuits, because the sharks are so fast and they move through the water so easily, okay? And the scales is one of those features that helps it to move easily through the water, okay? And when we look at the overall shape of our shark's body, we say that it is streamlined. Can everyone say that for me? Streamlined, very good. And what we mean by that is we have this nice point of a nose, and then as you go back, it gets a little wider, and then it narrows down again. And this really does help the shark to be able to, that nice pointed nose, break into the water and break through, and it's gonna go, and then that water's gonna rush around its body, and it's another piece that helps that shark to be able to swim quickly through the water. Okay, they have those scales, and then they're also gonna have that streamlined sharp, I'm sorry, shape to their body, okay? The other big thing that helps them to be able to swim so quickly through the water is their tail fin back here, okay? And that is what we call the caudal fin. Can everyone say caudal fin for me? Very good. So that caudal fin, okay, has two parts. We have the upper lobe, which would be the top half, and we have the lower lobe, which is that bottom half down here, okay? And the caudal fin, is gonna, if we look at our hammerhead shark again, okay, it has a side-to-side -side movement that's gonna help the shark generate what we call the thrust force. And that thrust force is what's gonna generate that forward movement for the shark, okay? Now, if we were talking about a whale, okay, whales have an up and down movement, right, to their tail fin. But sharks have that side-to-side -side movement. In some sharks, okay, when we look at that caudal fin, like we have the picture of the white shark, you notice that the upper lobe and the lower lobe are very similar, right, in size. You could almost say that they're near symmetrical, okay? But when we look at some other species, like this hammerhead that we have here, does it look like our upper lobe is the same size as our lower lobe? No, our upper lobe is uh, a bit bigger than our lower lobe. So when we start talking about 
Some of those sharks, they're much faster swimmers, like the mako shark, that's the fastest, okay? On when we have a caudal fin that is more symmetrical between the upper and lower lobe, that's usually found on those faster swimming sharks. So is a hammerhead still a pretty quick moving shark? It is, but it's not as fast as that mako, and it's thought it's because of when they have a more symmetrical caudal fin with their upper and lower lobe, that does give them that advantage to create a much stronger thrust force to help them swim faster as they go through the water, okay? So the next fin we're gonna look at, if we come down underneath onto the lower side, the belly of the shark down here, okay, is we have the anal fin back here, okay? Um, and this is a fin that not all species of shark have, okay? Some have this anal fin, some do not. Um, and when we look at the anal fin, this is also a fin that's gonna help provide stability and balance for the shark as it is swimming through the water, okay? If we after the anal fin, this next fin that we are gonna have here, this is the pelvic fin, okay? And so when we look at that pelvic fin, all right, this is gonna be another fin. Again, it's helping to provide stability and balance for the shark as it's swimming through the water. And why is it so important that our sharks, you know, are stable and balanced? Well, if they get knocked upside down and they get stuck upside down, okay, in a position like this, then the shark goes into what we call the tonic state of immobility. And what this means is the shark essentially can't move. Its senses go inactive, okay, and until it writes itself over, that's when it'll become alert again, okay? And so it's really important that while the shark is swimming through the water, it doesn't fully get knocked upside down in that way. Now, for scientists, and able to what we do call work up a shark and be able to sometimes put tags on it or take samples and learn about the shark, if we can get a shark into this tonic state of the mobility, okay, it's going to better allow access to the shark in a safe way so that we can learn about it. And they'll do this for a few minutes and then they'll write the shark so the shark can swim off. And it's a way that doesn't cause harm to the shark as well as to the scientists who are studying the shark. So some scientists will do that so they can better learn about the shark in its natural environment, okay? So the next fin, all right, that we're going to look at is the long fins that come off the side of the shark, and that is looking at those pectoral fins, okay? So they have two pectoral fins, one on either side of their body, and this is gonna help the shark to be able to steer through the water. It's also gonna help them to generate lift, similar to an airplane with those long fins that come off the side of the airplane, okay? Um, what's gonna happen is, you know, when an airplane is flying, those fins, air gets underneath them and it helps to generate that lift so the plane can actually take off. And so when that water fluid gets underneath the, <laughs> getting confused between wings and fins here, I apologize, um, but when water gets underneath those fins on the shark, it's gonna help for the shark to be able to lift itself higher in the water column. So if it's gonna go up near the surface to be able to grab prey up there, right? that water getting underneath those pectoral fins is gonna help that lift so the shark can do so, okay? And then the last part that we're gonna label on our diagram today are the teeth, okay? And we know that the teeth of a shark are very exciting, all right? And looking at its mouth in general, it's one of the things that I think makes sharks famous. Um, and as Kristen talked about the other day when she looked at what makes sharks a unique type of fish unlike other fish, she really started to explain about how sharks have those multiple rows of teeth that continuously replace one another. And when we start looking at the different types of sharks, like this black tip here compared to this hammerhead, if we looked inside the mouth of these two sharks, we're gonna see that these two species actually have different types of teeth, okay? Um, and that's because different types of sharks eat different prey items, and so their teeth enables them based on where they live to be able to better capture their prey, okay? Now I know we've got a lot of questions coming in and I'm going to start answering those in just a moment, okay? But I did just wanna review one more thing for you. And now that we have our diagram, okay, all laid out with the different external anatomy parts of the shark, okay? And for those of you at home, 
I know we didn't get into the senses today. That's something we might look at doing next week for all of you, okay? Um, but if you want to take this further and label some of the senses on the shark yourself, I highly encourage you to do so. Um, but as I said in the beginning, you know, this was really looking at and labeling the parts of a great white shark. But there's a great book, okay, by Owen Davey. It's called Smart About Sharks. It's from Flying Eye Books, all right? And I wanted to read an excerpt from the beginning of this book because it really talks about and explains, if we look at this page here, okay, um, you know, when we start looking at the different types of sharks that we have and how one can differ from another. So it says, all fins considered, sharks evolved over 420 million years ago. That makes them more than 200 million years older than dinosaurs. Humankind has only been roaming the earth for less than 3 million years. These perfect predators were here long before us, and have survived several mass extinctions. There are now over 500 unique shark species alive today. Each of these species has become specially adapted in a process known as evolution. Evolution is the process by which animals have changed over time. Certain characteristics are passed down from generation to generation to help them survive. These surviving sharks are split into eight groups, which is known as orders, depending on scientific criteria. So as you look at the screen right now, you're going to see, all right, that how when we look at the exterior of anatomy of a shark, when scientists are observing sharks in their natural habitat and they're trying to figure out, well, which of the known 500 species of shark is this? They first start by looking at the outside of its body and looking for some of these key characteristics, and they'll follow a chart like this, okay? These are referred to sometimes as a, um, we're looking at the classification system, okay? Um, and they're first going to look at, remember how we said how some sharks have an anal fin and some sharks do not, okay? And then we also, if we get a little bit further here, some sharks have two dorsal fins and five gill slits, other sharks only have one dorsal fin and they might have more gill slits, like the seven gill shark. So we have all these different types of sharks, all right, and they all have similar anatomy um, and they all have those defining characteristics of a skeleton made of cartilage, firm rigid fins, multiple rows of teeth, five to seven gill slits, okay? But when we look at the placement of the fins on the body, the location of where the eyes are in comparison to the mouth, you know, if they have an anal fin, if they have a second dorsal fin, some of those details might differ from one species to another, but that's how we're then able to tell one species from another. So some of the questions that come in, you know, you've probably heard us say a few times now, well, it depends on which species. And so hopefully seeing this, that better helps you understand how, even though we talk about general shark anatomy, once we start looking at a specific species, that anatomy might change, just like the coloration pattern might change, okay? When we look, all right, at um, a white shark, so if we come back here and we look at, or we can look at this picture here of a white shark, and we look at the coloration, all right, we see that it has that gray back, and it has that nice white belly, hence where it gets its name, the white shark, right? Now, we call the coloration on this, it is a type of camouflage, and it's called counter shading. Can everyone say that at home? Very good. And so when we use that word camouflage, what does that even mean? All right, very good. So the ability for an animal to have camouflage is its ability to blend in with its natural environment. Okay, and there are different types of camouflage. Counter shading, okay, is something that we have with the white sharks. And what this allows the shark to do is if the shark is swimming right in the middle of the water column, okay? So that means we have the sand way down here, we have the surface right up here. So it's right in the middle there. There might be a prey item like a seal up here on the surface. And if that seal were to look down, it looks down and because the shark's back is all gray, it's gonna help to blend in with the dark water below it that gets deeper or that dark sandy bottom. Compared to if there was a prey item below, okay, that looks up, 
that white belly is going to help the shark blend in with the bright light from above, that, that sunlight, shining down. So this does help the shark to be able to blend in with its environment. And again, we call this counter shading. But if we look back at the, some of the sharks in this book, you're going to see different coloration patterns. And a lot of that is camouflage to help that species of shark blend in with its environment depending on where they live. If they're found in a coral reef habitat, a mangrove habitat, or a kelp forest, okay? The colors are going to change from one species to another, and it is often to better enable that shark to survive and thrive in its natural environment, okay? So again, thank you all so much for joining us today and learning about shark anatomy. Thank you for sharing these enrichment programs so people from all over can utilize this opportunity. Thank you so much, and have a great day.